Well, coming up on today's show, Exxon is sued by New York. Prices of EVs go up, down, and then sort of uppy downy, and disaster for the Renault Zoe that we bought a couple of weeks ago. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. It's Thursday, the twenty fifth of October, twenty eighteen. It's Martin Lee here, and I've been through every EV story I can find online to save you time. Thank you to myev.com. They help us make this show. Uh, myev.com. If you are new to the podcast cast are a marketplace in North America all about buying and selling EVs because it's custom designed to buy and sell EVs well the good thing about it is that you don't waste your time on like the other buying and selling car websites were just undesigned for dealing with electric cars go check that out a quick note on when you're downloading this by the way Tesla are due to release their Q3 earnings any minute now as the market has closed, but uh, nothing so far. All those details will be on tomorrow's show. So we'll start with the the disaster that is the Renault Zoe that we bought a couple of weeks ago. I'm, I'm sure you expect me to say that I know there's been an accident, we've written it off, that the battery has broken. No, none of those things. It's it's incredibly reliable and lots of fun for my wife to drive. The, the shocking news that I bring you today is that she's named it. Uh, she's named the car Kylie and she's quite keen on me calling it Kylie. Now, I've never named a car in my life. I know lots of people do. They are machines, not people. However, uh, we now have a Zoe named Kylie. I th- I'm surely you'll agree with me. That is a disaster. I mean, the car had a girl's name already. The car was called Zoe. But now it's called Kylie. Well, let's kick off with some news about our very good friends in the oil industry. (laughs) A few months ago, lawyers for the ExxonMobil Corporation stood before a judge and told New York's Attorney General to, and I quote, put up or shut up, after investigating the company's public disclosures about climate change, saying it should sue the company or just move on. Well, today... New York have chosen the former, reports Bloomberg in an excellent article today, which really explains how significant this story is to big oil. Uh, They continue to say that the state's Attorney General, Barbara Underwood, has sued the energy giant in state court in Manhattan, accusing it of misleading investors about how future regulations could impact the company's finances. The suit culminated in an almost three-year-long investigation that reached the highest levels of Exxon's leadership. Uh, So far, I can't find a statement from ExxonMobil, uh, a reply from them. If we get that, of course, we'll bring that to you uh, later in the week in the... Uh, in fairness, uh, to giving them a right to reply. The statement, though, from uh, Barbara Underwood, the Attorney General, said this, Exxon built a facade to deceive investors into believing that the company was managing the risks of climate change regulation to its business, when in fact it was intentionally and systematically underestimating or ignoring them, contrary to its public representations, end quote quite an accusation so yeah for ExxonMobil have a uh, a reply on that I will bring that to you I've put a link to the Bloomberg article in the show notes but New York suing an oil company is this going to be the first of many is this a test case well I guess we'll just have to wait and see prices of cars going up going down and then going uppy downy. We'll start with, uh, well, three different cars. We'll start with the Nissan Leaf. The Nissan Leaf, they say, could get more expensive by 10% here in the UK after we leave the EU next year. Yes, Brexit makes a return to the podcast. Uh, the car, uh, the Nissan Leaf, is made in Sunderland and it's facing uh, tariffs if the deal isn't done for Brexit. Uh, well, the World Trade Organization have general rules on tariffs and if no specific agreement can be reached, it just means that the standard 10% surge charge is added on all cars entering and exiting uh, the UK on on both sides as well. Every day, 1,100 EU trucks cross the channel at the moment to deliver car and engine parts to the UK car industry alone. After Brexit, even a short hold-up at customs of half a day or a few hours will cause huge logistical problems disrupting the production process and increasing costs. Meanwhile, in Italy, some good news. The little old Peugeot Ion gets a price cut down to €18,900. Yes, that's a lot of money for not a lot of car. I know what you're thinking. Uh, Whilst we wait for the new generation of city cars coming, which the Citroen C1, Peugeot 108, Toyota Igo are all supposed to be pure bevs. For now, we have the little Peugeot Ion and the Citroen C0. 
They have a dinky little 14 and a half kilowatt hour battery, so whilst you won't go very far, on the other hand, it won't cost much to fill up. And finally, yesterday I said that Tesla needs just a period of stability. Stop making changes to the design studio. Let us all just get used to what's on offer, what options are where, what costs what. And I'm glad they listened to not a single one of my words. Uh, They are currently... Uh, Tesla, uh, like Steve Jobs era Apple, relatively simple, but I'm so worried that they're on the point of turning into Tim Cook Apple, where there's a bazillion products, all of slightly different varieties, where there's iPads just a little bit bigger, but that one's got a little bit better screen and just a bazillion price points. I'm so confused. I used to love Apple products because it was like, right, this is the phone. That's the price. Slightly bigger batch, uh, slightly bigger storage if you want one. Well, uh, yesterday we talked about the need, I think the need for Tesla, just to calm down a little bit on all these changes they're making. After launching the mid-range Model 3 out of nowhere, they've just increased the price of it. Just days after launching it, that $45,000 becomes $46,000 now. Plus, they've reduced the long-range Model 3. Let me get this right. Yeah, long-range Model 3 they've reduced, uh, but only... If you get the dual motor powertrain, that's gone down by $1,000. So that's $54,000 down to $53,000. And clearly they're adjusting their business model to work with market demand. They want to hit profitability. That's smart. Even if it does leave me confused, you can't blame them for doing it. But I just get stressed out about trying to follow what costs what where. And also, I think if I bought a Model 3, if I put my order in now, I worry that in a week's time, or you know, say the day of delivery or something, like then all of a sudden that car's going to cost a lot less. I mean, it could cost a lot more. But all of a sudden, someone else buys it, and they're saving a few thousand dollars. And I'm like, oh, man, this is kind of, this is stressful to me. This is not what Tesla is all about, not having dealerships, being transparent with pricing, and just getting away from that whole kind of, oh, look, we'll do you a little deal because it's not selling very well. And, oh, we want to up, we want to increase desire of the dual motor. So we're just going to do a little price on this. And we'll do a little deal, a little nudge, nudge, wink, wink. That's what I hate about dealers when it's so manipulative like that. I love that online model of here's the price. Do you want to buy it or not? Because here's the price. It's up to you. You can buy it or not. And that's kind of what, it seems like they're losing it. I don't know. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Very happy to be wrong if you disagree with my analysis of that situation. Well, Nissan's Leaf became the first EV to secure regulatory regulatory approval yesterday as an energy backstop for Germany's grid. The Japanese car maker said to us today uh, that something it hopes is going to attract corporate fleet customers now that they have been approved for V2G. This is according to the New York Times, uh, vehicle to grid and vehicle to home technology, V2G. G and V to H technology is that connection between your car and your grid, your power supply, through which power can move in two directions. That potentially enables car owners to store energy, sell energy back to the network from the big batteries that are inside your car. Whilst utilities could use the electric cars as a backstop if the demand rises, maybe even guaranteeing that they keep one kilowatt hour of all the cars connected and they can use that rather than firing up locally generated dirty power plants. Well, adding that uh, Nissan said it's going to be targeting corporate clients with fleets of more than 60 EVs, adding that services based on V2G technology are going to be offered in Germany from next year. I'll put a link to that Reuters article, sorry, the New York Times article in the show notes. Good news for LG Chem. They are investing in more battery technology. Of course, LG Chem, one of the big names in battery supply for electric vehicles, and they're not standing still. Uh, Enovate Corporation is a developer of a silicon-dominant composite anode material. Wowzers. And high-energy density batteries uh, that announced today LG Chem have participated in a round of fundraising for them. So LG Chem... Uh, investing here in some next-generation battery technology. Enovate's battery was introduced last year, and their HD energy technology enables lithium-ion cells with up to 50% higher capacity than conventional graphite cells. The cells can be charged to 75% in just five minutes, and they can safely charge and discharge down to minus 40 degrees C, capturing more energy during regen braking as well, extending their range 
and in cold climates. Well, Enovate's HD technology is self-standing silicon-dominant composite anode uh, with more than 70% silicon. The uh, conductive silicon-dominant composite film anode is essentially... Uh, a 100% active material that can store lithium and has a high electrical conductivity. Enovate offers, they say, a complete HD energy technology and licensing package that will enable anyone who wants to build an EV to achieve production volume quickly with this technology and to drive the adoption of next-gen EVs. Interesting that LG have spotted that and have taken a financial position in that company. You can see that if that does really take off, perhaps becoming part of LG's business or them investing more money in it and that kind of thing because LG really are leading in EV batteries at the moment. Well, electric motorcycle maker Zero Motorcycles has announced its 2019 lineup with more powerful base models, an extended range, new battery technology, and some new colours as well. All according to Autoblog, starting with the top of the line DSR Dual Sport bike. That's got a 70 horsepower. Uh, it's added a, a Dual Sport windscreen. It's got some uh, hand guards, a 12 volt accessory socket. They're really adding to the features list of this. The aftermarket 6 kilowatt charge tank returns for 2019 as well, can charge the bike to 78 miles that's a good range in just an hour of charging at your really standard level 2 charging stations that is 6 times faster than using a 110 volt outlet uh, now they're compatible with models going back as far as 2015 as well if you're an existing owner range on the DSR is 163 miles in total if you're in the city and 98 on the highway top speed on a bike of 102 miles an hour it certainly feels like 102 miles now. I've not ridden a motorbike in a long time, but 102 feels like 102. Well, Zero's base models uh, are, uh, at the moment, 7.2 kilowatt hours, and uh, they uh, get a power boost as well. So you get more range, more power, and if you want, you can opt for a longer range battery. It's a 14.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. That extends the range to 204 miles if you really want that in the city, and 20, 223 three miles uh, for the s model as well so there's a if you really fancy getting on a zero motorcycles bike and doing 223 miles of range in the city and uh, sitting on top of a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery then that technology is now available for you Let's talk Volvo. Volvo cars has acquired a stake in the mobile EV rapid charging company called Freewire. And it's uh, via the Volvo Cars Tech Funds. BP's venturing business has already invested $5 million in Freewire earlier this year. According to news coming to us via uh, Green Car Congress, Freewire is a San Francisco-based company that's been a pioneer in these kind of flexible, fast-charging technologies for EVs, both stationary and mobile fast-charging technology here. And I've, in the past, been a little bit critical about these mobile charging technologies, you know, these big batteries that sit on wheels and... Uh, like like a giant tea trolley that they can sort of wheel it to your car and charge your car up. They say that it allows EV charging to be deployed quickly and widely. Free wire products currently offer level two charging at uh, 7.5 kilowatts or DC fast charging at 50 kilowatts. The level two models uh, will recharge themselves from a wall outlet and they can charge two vehicles at once as well. The level three Fast chargers also recharge from a wall outlet and come with Chatamo and Tesla standard plugs. Freewire says they're also looking at developing a 120 kilowatt fast charging solution that can give 480 miles of range in just one hour. Now, while Volvo Cars' electrification strategy doesn't envision uh, direct ownership of charging or service stations, the investment in Freewire reinforces its overall commitment, they say, uh, to supporting the transition to electric mobility. And finally, today, it doesn't sound like Dominic from Inside EVs is the number one fan of the cute little Renault Twizy. It may well have found its audience, though. A rare sight on North American shores. I think you can't really buy the Twizy in North America, can you? Um, the low-speed version of the... A little two-seater. And when I say two-seater, it's one in the front and one in the back. Uh, uh, you sit, uh, you sort of uh, sit like that. Uh, it's uh, been available for lease in Canada for a while. It's not even a car. It was technically a quadricycle, but that's fine. Hasn't had great sales apart from here in Europe and also somewhere else. Well, they blame uh, Renault blames the poor sales figures on the lack of charging infrastructure, but. 
There is one region with good charging points and really high Twizy sales, and that would be South Korea. So instead of cancelling the Twizy program altogether, they're going to move the production. Uh, Renault are moving the production to Renault Samsung, which is in Busan in South Korea. 60% of Twizy production has been exported anyway. More recently, 90% of Twizzies have been going to South Korea. So... It seems like it's made its market, and they're going to make the cars there instead to make them, obviously, closer to the market they sell to, and hopefully cheaper. Well, thank you very much to everyone that's answered question of the week so far this week. Uh, thank you to you to myev.com for setting our question. It is this. Putting range aside, because let's face it, everybody wants more range on their battery. What do you think is lacking with today's EVs? Is it design? options a choice of models maybe a lack of education or even social pressure i'd love to know drop by the comments on the blog evnewsdaily.com you can email my email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com and you can use the facebook and youtube comments to leave your answer as well hi to nick uh, that would be ev nick on twitter who's helped me out uh, a lot over the uh, over this year with advice uh, when we were looking at getting my wife, her Renault Zoe. He's got a new video on his channel, uh, which is him and uh, Will Adams from DSG up in the, the north of England here, and uh, taking a look at the Kona, which is a car that so many people are really excited about, the Hyundai Kona, and he's uh, he had a little drive in that. He's got a new review on his YouTube channel if you want to have a little look at that. Thank you to the 106 patrons of the podcast whose generosity means that we get to make this. If you fancy checking out patreon.com slash evnewsdaily, uh, you would be very welcome to have a look at that page. There are 275 episodes online waiting for you to download for free from the places you get podcasts from. And if in return for me doing this, you can leave a little review on those kind of platforms, that would be amazing, or even sharing the podcast with maybe at least one person who might be EV curious. On the socials, just search EV News Daily and you'll find me. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.